How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Conti and Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> the first time they go offense, they take Jordan Love. <laughs> they take Jordan Love. Listen, Matisse Thibel will lock up. Uh, the <laughs> CP3. Oh my god. Chris Paul. Oh my god. Chris Paul, baby. Oh. Right, Will? Nope, I totally disagree. Like, look. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 15 of Conti and Nick. And uh, this is a pretty big one. I'm Will Nicholson. As always, I have with me Gino Conti. And uh, this is our very first episode live on the Bench Sports app. Uh, and I'm, I'm very excited to to be doing this. Gino, how are you doing? Folks, hello. I'm glad that we're here on live. I would just like to clarify, but for the first 10 minutes, I'm probably going to be talking through the phone like we did with Bob Sosi. I am very, very sorry. I, there was a huge 18-wheeler that fell on its side on the highway, and we, I got caught up. I got stuck, and it happens. I'm on my way. I'm doing as fast as I can without trying to get pulled over, but hello. It is good to see – well, not see, but it's good to talk to all of you. <laughs> hey, it, it wouldn't be a show with us if something didn't go wrong along the way. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so we're we're very excited to to be here first episode, uh, and yeah, it's it's so good to be able to to tell everyone we're doing a live show. This is a very big step for us. Uh, we did skip episode fourteen; it is recorded, so that's kind of going to be our our uh, our bonus episode that will be coming out. Uh, and today we're going to be talking for this episode. We're going to be talking about NBA free agency, everything that's happened so far. Uh, and I'm I'm super excited for this upcoming season, just from the moves that we've seen so far. Uh, and Gina, what who do you who do you think has been the biggest winner so far from free agency? Oh, biggest winner so far, without a doubt, the Chicago Bulls. Yes. I mean, I, I think that's crazy. I want to get to them a little later because I do want to talk about our beloved hometown Celtics. Okay. <laughs> I think that the I think that the Boston Celtics aren't the biggest losers, and I don't think they're winners. But I'll be damned if it's not our first live stream and we don't talk about our home team. <laughs> okay. So what do you think so, so far? of the moves that they've made because really they've done nothing other than bring back Ennis Cantor, get Josh Richardson, and then fail to get uh, Chris Dunn in a trade that fell through with Thompson and DeLon Wright. It was a complete mess. They couldn't figure out the salary cap. What, what do you think about that so far? Because I think, quite frankly, that it hasn't been a complete disaster, but I definitely think they could have uh, could be doing better at this point. Yeah, see, the Celtics so far, as a Celtics fan, the only way I could describe how the offseason's gone so far is lackluster, right? Because we heard Patty Mills, we, we've been hearing maybe Chris Dunn, or uh, sorry, Kendrick Nunn, sorry, I heard a little bit of that. We got Chris Dunn. I mean, we, we got players that we need. We need guards. We go out and we get Josh Richardson, and we go and get Chris Dunn. And uh, it's, it's lackluster, right? Because we really want to see the big names. I know... Celtics fans I've talked to really wanted to see Derrick Rose get a shot in Boston. Uh, but overall, the trades that we made before free agency really started, I like that we got Al Horford back. I like that we moved Kemba, even though I think Kemba will do good in New York compared to how he was here. I don't think he fit here. So overall, I think it's it's been lackluster. You know, we didn't get any really big names, but it hasn't been the worst. It hasn't been the best. I think you, you put it in the best regard that way. Uh, but, yeah. So Josh Richardson is somebody who, on a good day or on a good season, will average about, I'd say, about 15 to 16 points, which is a good, uh, valuable score and a good and a decent enough shooter, right? And actually, someone who can defend as well. He's kind of lengthy. He has a little bit of size to him. Not that strong, but it's it's crazy. So, anyways, I think that it could be intriguing because in Miami, he did run a little bit of the point. So, do you think at all, like? The Celtics are trying to maybe fit that in there, and Ime Udoka kind of has like a unique plan there. Or do you think they'll just move him to the bench and be Tatum's primary backup, like small forward, power forward ish? I think he's going to probably come off the bench. I mean, right now, our starting point guard, I think, is going to be Marcus Smart right now. Uh, and Josh Richardson, I think he'll be a, a good player for us, definitely. But I don't really see him cracking the starting lineup. I think he'll be coming off the bench for us. I know, so I definitely do think, though, because like like I said, I think that a lot of Josh Richardson's, like, big success did come when he was at the one position, and I think he did impress there. So, I mean, do you think, because I really don't think that Peyton Pritchard is ready to be thrusted into that starting role. He's not. Do you, I, feel, I, I really do think that, honestly, I'd be okay with Josh Richardson there, unless, unless we bring back the little guy. I have seen... Office. 
things about that, reports, and I, I want it to happen so bad. I want to see Isaiah Thomas. Him, and he liked his, and you, you liked your tweet. He did. A while ago, Isaiah Thomas did, like, one of my tweets about him coming back to Boston. That's probably my biggest flex ever. But, uh, yeah, I, I would love to see him back in green. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've heard, and from what I've seen, it doesn't look likely that it's going to happen. It's kind of, you know, I guess you could call it a fever dream. So looking more realistically, I think the Celtics' best option at point guard, when you look at Peyton Pritchard, when you look at Josh Richardson, when you look at when you look at everyone, our best option at point guard, I think, is Marcus Smart at the moment. That's whether, you know, we, this free agency is still early. We still make moves. There's still guys out there. But right now, it's it's Marcus Smart. Uh, and with, uh, with Coach I, I think maybe – It'll be better. His shot selection, every you know concern we've had about Marcus Smart, I think will improve in this this new Celtics system. But right now, Marcus Smart is the best possible guy you can put at point guard, and I think for the season right now, that's where it's looking like he's going to be. Well, listen, do, do you think or do you believe the reports that has said Brad Stevens has grown like frustrated with like the sporadicness? Of Marcus Smart on offense. Oh, a hundred percent! I believe it. I, I believe that a hundred percent. We watch the games. We see it. <laughs> first of all, you and Dilo owe me an apology. Okay. I brought it up. I brought it up two episodes ago, and you were like, "Nah, Brad loves him." Uh uh-uh. uh. Report came out. I told you guys. Well, look, I look. I think I think that he's definitely one of Brad's guys. Just because he wanted, you know, he's not traded. He's not gone yet. But. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> it, it could happen, but no, I, I I think that he's still one of Brad's guys. I think that the players like him. Everyone's frustrated with him on offense, though, because he is a little bit of a, a shot chucker we've seen. And I think uh, Brad might have liked him enough to not want to tell him that he he should stop taking those shots. But, you know, he I think anyone watching idiotic, the games... Yeah, it was game. anyone who's watching the games, besides that one Toronto game in the playoffs where he hit, like, five threes and... X amount of time, everything was chaotic that Marcus Smart did, <laughs> as, as offensively, so, defensively, as, first team all defense that doesn't change for me. He's a great defender, oh, I, but not. offensively he he's he's just not there, and he's not gonna get there. When we were when he was younger, that was the <laughs> the the shining light for Marcus. Like oh, he'll improve offensively. He's improved his shooting and his playmaking still really good, which is why I think he can play point guard. But overall. He, he's not going to change on offense unless Marcus. you bring in a coach like Coach I who demands certain things from his players, unlike Brad. And in that case, I think Marcus Smart can improve in the Celtic system. Well, I, I mean, at this point, though, if I'm being completely honest with you, Will, I think Marcus Smart is the, one of those it is what it is or he is what he is. Yes. Make sense? So, honestly, like, I, I understand and I really do get excited listening to you saying, like, under Coach uh, Udoka, he's going to, you know, take on this new attitude. He's going to become a team player and listen to somebody with a heavy hand. But at the same time, like, you really think only a couple months of an off season, and then a few months, I'd say about half a year, of a season, like a regular season plus playoffs, hopefully, in general, is something that we'll be able to change about, what, like seven years now of play? I, I do, and let me tell you why. Marcus Smart and anyone who's ever played with or talked to Marcus Smart says the exact same thing. He is a junkyard dog type of player. He's going to play his role. He's going to do what he has to do. And, you know, maybe from a Marcus Smart perspective, he thought that he had to be this offensive option last year, and no one really told him otherwise because they love his defense. However, I think that Marcus Smart can play his role if, Coach I tells him, hey, this is what you have to do. You have to play good defense, and you have to be a playmaker and reduce turnovers on the offensive end. Oh, my God, he's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, my God. I got the seat set up for you right there, my guy. <laughs> hey, it, it wouldn't be an episode of Conti and Nick if, if there wasn't chaos. You know what oh I mean? Oh, my God. So, Gino Conti officially live in the studio. Gino, we can hear you not through a phone now. Oh, man, doesn't my voice sound exactly the same? <laughs> Huh. Yeah, but uh, Marcus Smart, sorry, we were on Marcus Smart. I think that if, you know, he has a guy like Coach Ime Ikoda, I always butcher Yudoka. it. Yudoka, sorry, I'm going to butcher it so many times until I hear it enough. I think that he will be able to play his role, and, you know, this team, I think, is still good with Marcus Smart at the point guard. All right, well, if you think that, okay. <laughs> so, do you want to move on to the Knicks? Because I, yes. I got some stuff to say about the oh, Knicks, I wanna, my friend. Oh, I want to hear the Knicks. Okay, 
If there is something that could possibly be worse than losing to the Atlanta Hawks in the NBA playoffs, it's the Knicks NBA free agency this season, <laughs> okay? Do you know the notion? I mean, look, going into last offseason, okay, the Knicks had their strategy. They had their timeline completely correct. Pick up guys who were, I wouldn't say aging, may, maybe who were just a little underperforming, underwhelming, or like on a, on a basis where teams didn't really want them anymore. Pick them up on a cheap deal. Okay, see if they can overperform and overachieve. Okay, and then when they look good, you trade them. Okay, that was the direction the Knicks were going in last year. And then this year, but instead of trading for somebody who was of a higher caliber, they extended those players. <laughs> don't they know that? Don't they know that one hit wonders, or I wouldn't even say one hit wonders, because Burks is going to be a good scorer no matter where he goes. But he's not going to be someone who carries a playoff game. So like, you don't you don't believe in the Julius Randle takeover part two? I do two? not believe in the Julius <laughs> Randle takeover part two. Okay, I like Julius Randle. I like him a lot. The man can't dribble. He he can only dribble with one. One hand. Okay. We, we saw in the playoffs, right? Yeah, this we, isn't the we 60s. Saw in the playoffs. Yeah, this isn't the 60s with Bob Cousy anymore. <laughs> okay, like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, I, like, much respect to Bob Cousy. Okay, the man's 90. He's still kicking it. He's still going. Okay, much respect. It, it doesn't work. Teams and the Hawks figured them out in a second. A smart coach like Nate McMillan figured it out in 0.25 milliseconds. Okay, Trey you, Young. Yeah, well, and Trey Young. You extended Alec Burks. Absolute disaster. Okay, you you extended Nerlens Noel. Good defender, but th no, absolute disaster. Much respect. I love D Rose. Extend D Rose as all, as much as you want. Yeah. Lo then you signed Evan Fournier for <laughs> seventy two million dollars. Oh, but wait. There's more. <laughs> and then Kemba Walker, the money isn't bad. Eight mil a year for Kemba Walker, I can live with. I can deal with it, okay? But this is a man who couldn't play back-to-back, -back, and he's going <laughs> to play for a coach who notoriously plays their guys for 40 minutes a game? <laughs> are you kidding me? Um, yeah, the Knicks are in. Wait, you're telling me that they're not going to photo they're not going to get all the players they photoshop on twitter <laughs> <laughs> no this Kemba Walker is going to be a straight up disaster okay Kemba Walker is going to be a straight up absolute like atrocious it's going to be an abomination and it's going to be a disaster okay I i'm really fired up more than usual i'm sorry i had a long drive <laughs> it's, here it's <laughs> been a long day eh? it's it has. totally understandable it has so do you do you i know you said that you think Kemba's going to be a good fit but yes. he, i'm sorry will he is going to be a disaster I want you. I want Look, as as far as New York Knicks go, they like the names, right? They like the big name guys. Kemba Walker is a big name guy. And look, do I think the Knicks are going to be crazy good and a top four seed again in the East? No, absolutely not. Chicago, on the other hand, we'll get to them later. But New, the New York Knicks, and this happens every offseason. I don't know. I'm not even surprised at this point. We hear all these big games like, oh, they're going to shoot for Kawhi. They're going to see if they, if they can make trades to get X, Y, and Z All-Star. And it never happens. And, and it's the exact same thing. The Kemba Walker, I will say, is like a big name that they actually went and got. And then they just extend the players that they got for one-year deals last year. New York, I mean, come on. The, the New Knicks York Knicks are going to miss the playoffs this year. Really? Yep. That's a bold take. It's not a bold take. It's, it's is it though? They were, they, what they did was well, what they, well, what they did was ridiculous. Yeah, okay, like no, who I, I who agree. looks at Evan Fournier signing him what four years 70, 78 mil was it? For yes. 72 or 78 mil. Okay, who looks at that and says, yeah, yeah, New York's, New York's, you they're know. In. They're, they're back, they're, baby. They're back. They're, they're back. back. <laughs> okay, no. I, I have, if you, if you look right here, Thank we you. have we have all the New York Knicks moves so far. This could be a little outdated, but it, it pretty much has No, that's everything. good. I, I mean, Kemba Walker was the earliest acquisition. Okay, so, so. yeah, it's, it's pretty updated. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. That was probably the biggest freak out I've had on this podcast. <laughs> okay, but it's it's so it idiotic. Okay, listen. Yeah. We were saying this like I was saying this last year. The podcast wasn't a thing yet, but we were all here saying, "Wow, the Knicks are going in a really good direction." Okay, like they did the smart thing, took the underachieving guys, made them overachieve, and then what they did do this off season is they should trade and package those guys while their trade value is high. They could, I guarantee you, like it, it wouldn't have been maybe exactly the guy I'm about to mention, but someone maybe of his caliber, they could have packaged those guys for C.J. McCollum 
and maybe a couple firsts. Okay. Maybe a couple firsts. Okay, you have to throw in there as well. Okay, because I understand that Nerlens Noel and Alec Burks aren't <laughs> root, but someone the caliber of CJ McCollum, very close to an All Star, if not an All Star in some years. Okay, they could have done that. Are you? Do you really have like any doubts that they could have done that, Will? I think Portland says no to maybe the McCollum one, but someone of his caliber. Yes, you know? no, I, I agree. I think they could have been able to. To make a trade, they had to do something, right? That's all. That's the New York thing. We have to do something. Last year, let's throw Julius Randle a deal. Let's throw Bobby Portis yeah, well, a deal. Well, to be to be fair, the Julius Randle one did work out this year. It did. And he was. And he. And yes, he did but, carry. But like but, we said, we don't yeah. believe in Julius Randle part two. Yeah, I don't. You yeah, don't. Exactly. I don't think anyone. Especially should. since how he got exposed. Okay. Yes. So I, I'm about to lose my cool. Okay. <laughs> so would you like to move on to the Chicago Bulls? Well, R- really quick, and okay. this is for the listeners at home. I want. I'm gonna read off to you the deals that the Knicks gave out because I have it right in front of me and it would be a crime for me to not say this and I want you to interpret whether you think these guys deserve multi-year deals. Taj Gibson, one year, okay. Alec Burke, three year. Nerlens Noel, three year. D. Rose, three year. Yeah, it's acceptable. Evan Fournier, four year deal and then they get Kemba Walker who I think is still what? He's got two years or something? It was two years, uh, eight uh, eight mil a year. So 16 mil, 16 mil. Those are multi-year deals for Kemba Walker, who we've seen decline, Evan Fournier, Nerlens Noel, and Alec Burks. It's uh, it's a joke. But uh, but again, well, the Kemba Walker money doesn't bother me. It doesn't. Okay? No, it the, doesn't. The money you paid for Kemba Walker is fine. Eight mil a year. You know, if it if he sucks, which he's going to, then <laughs> you only paid eight mil, whatever. Yeah. Okay. But I'm gonna repeat myself. This is a guy who, for one of the easiest going teams in the league, coaches like Brad Stevens, he couldn't play a back to back. And now he's going to play for one of the most notoriously, like, rough and tough, grit and grind, like, play and get back on defense teams in the league. It's not going to work. It's going to be an absolute unmitigated disaster. Yeah, I <laughs> – so you, you have New York missing the playoffs, right? Yes. I – hey, I, I can't I can't judge because I think the East so far gotten better. And I want to mention real quick because I don't want to talk about them in detail, but we did talk about him uh, last episode, which you guys didn't hear yet, but we talked about Jared Allen and how important we thought Jared Allen was as a center. Gets extended for 105. I just want your reaction to that, to the 105 million. We haven't so, talked about it yet. I'm not mad. I'm just surprised and confused. Yes. Okay, so I'm just very curious as to how they're gonna fit because Mobley was considered like the prototypical center, like out of the draft. You know, so yeah. I, I really do think that it's a bit confusing. I'm like curious as to how they're gonna work because you're not paying a guy twenty mil a year, a hundred mil in total to sit on the bench. Yeah. Okay. Like that's not that's not how it's gonna go down, my friend. That's so I, I'm we, curious. We did, we did talk about though Evan Mobley sitting on the bench maybe for a year and developing. Which maybe it looks like that's the route. Now. Maybe when you throw the bag at Jared Allen. Yeah, maybe. So like I said, and if he hits the weight room and he finally gets like some muscle to him then maybe you have a bit of congestion in the front court. Who knows? But, hey, we'll see how it goes down there in Cleveland. I'm curious. But, hey, let's talk about our Bulls, my friend. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about our Bulls. <laughs> so First of all, this, I'd, like to make, biggest I'd like to make to the say. I'd like to make the announcement that Alex Caruso is switching to number 23. <laughs> wait, wait, actually? <laughs> Buddy. Oh, come on. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Why you got to play me like that? I'm just joking. But, um, hey. Could you imagine? Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Seriously. Could you imagine? That uh, would be awesome. I don't want to lessen Caruso's legacy by giving him that number. <laughs> Can we at least give him 45? Yeah. <laughs> Can they unretire that one for the GOAT? Seriously. But, anyways. DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, Daniel Tice, and Tony Bradley. Where the hell did this come from? Like, when all of a sudden did Chicago become a, a free agent destination? I can destination? tell you why. What? It's because Zach Levine has improved, and we've seen it, and next year he is a unrestricted free agent. This is the Chicago Bulls saying, here, take a team. F- finally. You get DeMar DeRozan, you get Lonzo Ball, you have <laughs> you have Caruso, and yeah. you have Patrick Williams who's developing. They went and got Vucevic at the trade deadline. Yeah, Vucevic, yeah. yeah. Another this, all-star. This team is I'm very excited for. I know. Very it, excited. It, here's the thing, too. It's not like it's a bunch of... It's not like it's L.A. where it's three MVP players. It's multiple all-stars. Yes. You know? And I think that that's actually really exciting because none of them... Okay, yes, you could say that Zach Levine was ball dominant, but I argue it's because he had to be. It's because he was the guy there. Okay? It's going to be kind of similar. And it's going to be like a slightly watered-down version, I think, of when CP3 went to the Suns and Devin Booker could play off-ball more. 
okay? And then you had Lonzo be the facilitator, and then you just let Zach Levine be the superstar that he is without all the pressure going on him. Now, Lonzo definitely improving his shooting was a huge massive, part of massive. that. Massive. If you look huge at the numbers, him shooting off a catch-and-shoot, was it was 42% from three yeah. or something. Yeah. That's, a, that's a reliable three-point shooter off the catch and shoot which is very very important because the spacing on this team if Lonzo can shoot consistently will be amazing exactly. the spacing will be insane I want to I want to correct myself what I said earlier Daniel Tice got traded to Houston and they extended him okay and then and I I was just I'm sorry I was going crazy but yeah. I, but Daniel Tice is a member of the Houston Rockets someone now. corrected no me earlier and yeah. said we did not get Chris Dunn too so apologies yeah to that. yeah yeah no absolutely so Anyways, I would have... Shut up, John Bro. Yeah, <laughs> So, obviously, I think with these moves, they make the playoffs. Okay, I, th- I wouldn't say it's a no-brainer, but I think it's about a 95% guarantee. I, with okay. this team, they have yes. to. They so, absolutely have to. How far do they make it? Second round. You think so? And I think, I think that's generous. I mean, if... Look, this year was a weird year for the NBA as far as teams who were kind of underdogs... You know, performing really well. The Suns were kind of a dark horse. The Bucks were a dark horse. The Nets went out early, and I don't think next year is going to be like that. I think the Bucks will still be good. The Nets are going to get so much better. The Lakers, I mean, oh my God, have have they improved? Mm. And then you yeah, have they improved into a great retirement home. <laughs> <laughs> the first, all right, really quick, the, the posts on Twitter I've seen about the Lakers being old is hilarious. I've seen the Los Angeles 401 Kers. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been awesome. I it love is. those. I, I love those. However, the, back to the Chicago Bulls, I think second round would be generous. L- l- all right, let's see maybe four seed, right? Then that, that one might be a little bit generous. As a so you seed. think they're going to be kind of like the New York Knicks in terms of success? Yes. Maybe, I, I, maybe I th- not yeah. in terms of the same way they succeed, yes. but just in terms of success in general. Yes, I, I think they could be on that level. Maybe a four or five seed, and they beat the five seed, and they move into the second round, and I think maybe that's where they, they meet the Nets, and then I don't think they can handle the Nets. But if you're a Chicago fan, I mean, you finally have a team that should actually make the playoffs, so I, th- this is a win for Chicago, 100%. So, so do you think that Zach Levine is capable of taking another step forward, like becoming an even better player and making himself like a bona fide superstar? Because this year he was an all-star. Okay, maybe he played even a, a slightly better than an all-star. But do you think that he's capable of moving to like an MVP caliber player? In the MVP kind, conversation? Like maybe not in the MVP, but yeah. Yeah, yeah actually top, let's top, say in the like MVP. Top five in MVP. Yeah, that's like, we could say that. Like, do you think yeah. like maybe something, do you think he could make it to Donovan Mitchell's level? Let's say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zach Levine, I, yeah. absolutely. Because I think that Donovan Mitchell, in my opinion, is the second best shooting guard in the league behind Devin Booker. So I'm going to move past that and, <laughs> pretend, and pretend I didn't hear that. No, I love Donovan Mitchell. Love Joe. <laughs> but look, Zach Levine, you have a guy, athletic. He came into the league. Everyone thought he was just a, a dunker. You know, he entered the dunk contest. He won, what, once or twice? Put on an absolute twice. show with Aaron Gordon. Yes. He won twice. Best but dunk, I'm telling you, like... 2016 is the best dunk contest those ever. Re- that revitalized those dunk contests to, like, to no end. And honestly, everything else has been a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Nothing will ever beat that 2016 dunk. Nothing. Well, if Vince, it was Vince Carter and MJ versus Th- Dominique. Those, but, yeah. those were the best dunks, right? Yeah. The, the Vince Carter dunks were the best. But I think as far as back and forth and, like, entertainment goes... And like the innovation, like Aaron mm. Gordon putting a mascot yeah. on the what are they, the hoverboards I, I, or whatever. I'd argue that MJ and Dominique is still the number one, but I'd I say think Aaron, it's I think I think Aaron Gordon and, and, and Zach Levine is number two. But anyways, anyways, Fair. do you think that um, <laughs> Zach Levine has the chance or is capable of being like you said, like an MVP caliber player, like the top five? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like, so he, came, you, so he, you, he was a dunker, yeah. and then he developed his shot. And he became more of not an iso ball player, but a dynamic scorer, able to put the ball on the floor, go get you a bucket. And I, I, I think he can improve even so more. So, in other words, we haven't seen the best in your I opinion don't think of Zach have. Levine. I don't think we have. I think this year we're going to start to really see Zach Levine's like, true potential. Like, he could stay the same, and that'd be fine. He'd still be an all, all-star level player. But if we see an elevation to a guy who you can literally give the ball to in the fourth quarter and say, hey, Go get a take bucket. us there. He he has he has the tools, man. He's able to dribble the ball. He's got a great jumper. He's got a great fadeaway jumper. And he like, developed that yeah. jumper too. Oh, he's he's got the tools, man. So Zach Levine, I'm very excited to see what he's going to do this year with an actual team around him. 
it's it's gonna be exciting. If you're so, a Bulls fan, you should be happy. With one this. thing about uh, the Chicago Bulls that y- you might not really think about, I think the X factor of this team is Patrick Williams. I really, I really, hey, yeah, I awesome. really do think he is the X factor when you think about it. If he improves because, his shot, I because, mean, because it's... yes, well, yeah, he he actually had like a decent mid range game. Like he came out of the draft and everyone was like, "Ooh, that's kind of a reach at four. But he proved himself to be an NBA ready player with some extra tools already that still can be developed. Okay, I really think that if Patrick Williams takes that next step. And, like, maybe not an all-star, but gets to something close to an all-star. And I I really do think he's capable of it, okay? I think the Chicago Bulls will be unstoppable. And I think they make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. If Pat, if Pat, Make it. Make it. Okay? I think the Bulls make it to the Eastern Conference Finals if Patrick Williams steps up and develops and continues his upward trajectory. Can can we quote you on that? You can quote me on whatever the (laughs) hell you want. (laughs) It's a podcast. What I say is recorded and it's going to be on here forever. (laughs) That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I think the Bulls are going to be good, but the Eastern Conference Finals, I I don't know about that. Even if Patrick Williams develops? I mean, how much of a development? Are well, we like I said, about? I think I think if he turns to somebody because he's already a good NBA ready defender, okay, as a rookie putting up eight to ten points a game, like in your rookie season, that's good. And along with being good on both ends of the floor, I, I like he showed lots of promise. And he he had some games where he really, you know, showed like, hey, this could be like maybe not obviously an MVP or the future of the league, yes. but a key key player on a contending team. Okay, like yeah. maybe, maybe like. Uh, no, I'm not ready to make the Chris Bosh comparison yet. I'm not. I'm not ready. That that's blasphemous. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm glad you all know what it is. Yeah, so, I, I'm not ready for that. But, re- but really quick. So? What? Oh, sorry. Well, oh, I was sorry. gonna say while while we talk about Chicago, I think it would be you know a little a little criminal to not talk about what what hap- what happened in that Chicago trade to send Lonzo Ball the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, what what do they do from here? Well, right? I think Zion is already reports have already come out. Zion is disgruntled. He's had what three coaches already. Yeah, he's had a new coach every year, and they just trade away uh, like a young piece. Um, obviously, Lonzo Ball isn't the glue to that team, but uh, he was a facilitator. He man. was. He was man, a primary ball you, handler. You know what I want? What I want a small market to just win, man. Milwaukee just did. Milwaukee, but I mean, you know, as far as like keeping young talent i just want them to win man yeah listen they, they just don't Devonte <laughs> they just graham don't. they need to win listen, I, I hear you <laughs> i like Devonte graham a lot okay he's a very efficient shooter he's a scorer who can put the ball in the hole and i think that's a good pickup for them it's a little bit of a shift from lonzo who's more of a pass first guy but i, I do like Devonte graham and i think he could fit and then Tom, Tomas sadaransky He's not the most inspiring name, okay? But he is a watered-down facilitator, a watered-down Lonzo Ball. Okay, so off the bench, a watered-down Lonzo Ball, you could do worse. Like, he's a solid backup point guard. Okay, there's really nothing wrong with a player like him. Garrett Temple, die. I don't like Garrett Temple, okay? <laughs> okay, re-sign Josh Hart, please, for the love of God. He's oh, a great, him. he's they a very him. good bench defender. He's someone who I really like, plays with a lot of energy, a lot of, no pun intended, Hart, okay? <laughs> I, I, re- I do like Josh Hart, and I think he will be essential to that team, and I think, I'm like, obviously, what they need, the answer, yeah. but I really do think he is needed in an untalked about part of their team. So we've talked a little bit about who we think the biggest winners are. I think the Lakers are, I wouldn't say they're the biggest winner necessarily. They definitely improved, but they are going to be, I don't know if you know this, they're going to be the oldest roster in NBA history. Right, right now. I didn't know about history, right, but I did know that they would be. Right now, as they keep going, they're going to, with average age, they're going to be the oldest team in NBA history. Jesus Christ. Okay, well, I mean, <laughs> if they can all hold up, if their knees don't, like, cr- like break all in the span of an 82-game season, then, yeah. you know, we'll see. But I think that the biggest winners so far are the Chicago Bulls. I, I would agree with you there. So we've talked about the winners. I want to know, and I already talked about mine, my biggest loser so far is the Pelicans because it just looks like Lon- not Lonzo. Lonzo is out the door. It looks like Zion is he's ready to leave, man. Mm. That's what it's starting to feel like. He's a free agent, what, next year? Well, I- I'm not going to say anything yet until that's confirmed. I, I, if I need to really clarify who my biggest loser <laughs> is, the New York Knicks, okay? They're going to be a disaster. They're going to be in the lottery next year. And I, I honestly 
don't think there's anything that stops that. They're going to be a disaster. But I know we have to wrap it up. So, yeah. yeah, I know we have to wrap it up. So, hey, guys, it's been real. The New York Knicks suck. They're <laughs> going to they're gonna suck for a long time because of this. But, uh, hey, yeah. do the outro, Will. Oh, we got till 7. We have till 7? Yeah. Oh, really? Did we extend? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought we were till 6. No, no, no. We still, we still oh, have 15 7? more minutes um, left to um, talk about the Miami Oh, my, ba- my bad, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's yeah. been a long day. Yeah. I, I get it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for those of you who are, are just tuning in and listening to us to us now, if you didn't know, uh, Gino was in very, very bad traffic for the beginning of I didn't so. move for 20 minutes. I'm being serious. Yeah, that's, and, and, that's rough. And some people... With the initials JB, say I, I I'm lying. Okay, <laughs> I, I did see that. Yeah, some people like that. like people we mentioned in the outro say I'm lying, but yes, there was an 18 wheeler that fell on its left side. Wow. And it was insane. Like I didn't move for like I said about 20 minutes. I was getting really anxious. I was on the phone with Will before this. Yeah. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's nuts, man. So yeah, I'm I'm a, little, I'm a little flustered. I apologize. But, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm ready, and I'm glad that nothing is uh, stopping this. So, yeah. you ready to talk about the Miami I'll, Heat? I'll talk a little Miami Heat real quick, because I actually, you know, if we're going to go back to winners real quick, I have the Miami Heat as a winner, definitely, in, in this offseason. You get Kyle Lowry. First of all, this team is going to be the funniest team in the league, because oh. Kyle Lowry is hilarious, Jimmy Butler is hilarious. They, they're all funny. They're funny guys. And I, for, I think they're going to be a great team, too, as, as far as that goes. Oladipo is going to return. They get P.J. Tucker, extend Duncan Robinson, extend Jimmy and Butler. You go and get Kyle Lowry. It's uh, Marquise Morris. I, see, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I saw Marquise Morris was there yesterday. And, and, and you know what? That's solid. That's a solid bench shooter who can also defend. I, I do like a guy like Marquise Morris on the team. And, you know, that's, he kind of fits, like, because, you know, he's kind of aggressive. Him and his brother Marcus are known to be kind of, you know, like, perpetrators in drama or, like, off-the-court or issues. When I say, actually, no, on-the-court issues, I'd say, like, fights, yeah. technical fouls. So that kind of fits the Miami Heat staff, <laughs> like, you know, like, culture. And all Pat Riley needs the to Jimmy do is... The Jimmy Butler culture. Yeah, yeah Pat, no, seriously. <laughs> and Pat Riley will just be like, here, Markeith, yeah, stop. stop okay, him. enough. You're wearing By number. Any yeah, means. you're wearing number. You're wearing number eighty-eight. Enough. <laughs> There's no way he keeps that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. You never know. He kept it a year in in uh, L.A., didn't he? In the he late did. Year. He kept so, the number any, eighty-eight. Anyways, so they got P.J. Tucker, which I love. Uh, Jimmy Butler, yes. Like he, a lot of people think that he's overpaid. I really don't. He's the heart and soul of that team. It really pains me to see Kyle Lowry leave because if you guys don't know. My second favorite team is the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. And Kyle Lowry was Mr. Raptor. Okay, like, Chris Bosh was the face of that franchise, and for a while, they were really hurting. Kyle Lowry came, and he gave the Toronto, he gave the six spirit, man. I'm telling you, like, he, and he didn't bring them a championship. It was Kawhi. I'm not stupid. But he was he, a big part of it. But he stepped up. For sure, but yeah. he stepped up. Okay, so it really is sad to see Kyle Lowry go. And you know what? Like, most people, when they're older, they want to play in the warmer weather. It puts them in a better mood. It makes them want to work harder. So I do think <laughs> – I'm, I'm being serious. So I, I do think that's going to put them, you know, I wouldn't say over the top, but I do think that's an uh, upgrade over Goran Dragic for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And Tor- Toronto, as you said, is, is one of your favorite teams and one of your favorite players in this draft, Jalen Suggs. And me and Gino in our mock draft – both had we had the top three we got it right then we both had Toronto at number four taking Jalen Suggs and they didn't yeah. so I, I gotta know your reaction to that because Jalen uh, Suggs one of your wrong. one of your favorite players in the draft Toronto had a shot to it's take it's wrong him. there's nothing wrong with OG and Anobi okay yeah. not there, if you are a team that has the right surrounding pieces okay and you have OG and Anobi as your starting small forward you're in very good shape. Okay, you're in very good shape. Pascal is close to an all-star and can be if he rebounds off this year. Okay, Chris Boucher is somebody who developed a lot. I really liked what I saw for him this year. He needs to be a bit more consistent, but I do think Chris Boucher, if he works harder, can be somebody who is integral to this team. Fred Van Vliet, he's a combo guard, so he can play the point. Okay, which I guess maybe they're trying to say Fred can play the point. But, I, I mean... If you're not going to keep Kyle Lowry, which I understand why because he's old or he's getting up there in age, why wouldn't you draft his replacement? Malachi Flynn is not going to be... <laughs> I'm sorry. Malachi Flynn is not going to be somebody who can step up to the plate and be like that guy, that point guard. He was decent okay, in his rookie year. He was okay at best most of the time. 
I, he's nothing, in my opinion, more than a glorified bench player in the NBA. And, and quote, you can quote me on that, and if I'm wrong, I gladly will be wrong because I hope he steps up and Toronto plays well. Okay, but... It was boneheaded. Scotty Barnes, yeah, he can and play. I love Scotty Barnes, man. I think Scotty Barnes is gonna be. Good. I think he's gonna he's be, gonna be good, a good player. But it doesn't. He, I mean, it doesn't. I don't make, think I he's agree, a fit. I'm agreeing with you. It he's not a fit. No, he's, he's not, not a fit there. He's not. They needed if they didn't if they weren't gonna get Lowry. Obviously, they weren't because he's in Miami yeah. now. When I saw then this, draft I was like, his oh. replacement. Yeah, well, when I saw this, I was like, oh, that means Lowry's staying in Toronto. And like a couple of days later. I see he's going to Miami. I'm like, what? Yeah. Who would have shot to take Jalen Suggs? Look, like, don't get me wrong. These guys have not played in the league yet. But, you know, the upside that Jalen Suggs would have to be a replacement for Kyle R- Lowry, he was the best guy on the board. He like, was. by a mile. And as far as a fit goes, I, I think it was absurd. That, and that, by the way, was the spark that just blew up the rest of the draft. Yeah, it, it was. It was crazy. It was. And, and you Josh know Josh Giddy goes five. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please, you're going to make me sick. <laughs> we're, 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 about to, we're about to eat in what, like uh, like an hour? Yeah. We're about to have we're about to have beat We're about to go to Buffalo Wild yeah. Wings and we're, we're talking about this disgusting draft. Yeah, thing. you're, you're going to make me nauseous, you're, okay? You're going to make me, yes. like, sick. I'm going to throw up. Okay. Uh, apologies. <laughs> I, I, I won't talk about Scotty Barnes anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, we yeah. can talk about him. But back to the Miami Heat. I like even I, I like all the moves that they made, except Duncan Robinson. Oh, you okay. Hate, you hate Duncan Robinson. Five year, ninety million for Duncan Robinson. I mean, Stun- what? really? He, that's eighty nine more million dollars than attributes he contributes to on the floor, because he can do one thing, one thing. Shoot. And he does it very, very well. For those of you who are are new to us, and you know maybe it's your first time listening to us on the bench, Gino Conti's mortal enemy is Duncan Robinson. He, and DK Metcalf. And, and DK Metcalf. And that, that's just who Gino is. He doesn't like one-dimensional guys. But, look, I, I disagree in the sense that Duncan Robinson, yes, he can only shoot. That's about it. But, I mean, it's worth the most points on the floor, man. And he consistently hits them, contested. He, I mean, he you, didn't you play as well. Like that. You need a guy like he, that. He, compared to his first year when the, when the Heat made the finals, he didn't perform up to that par. He didn't. I mean, we could chalk it up as a sophomore slump, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. We Whatever could, fits that Nicholson narrative. <laughs> <laughs> no, look. Uh, Duncan Robinson, he does what he needs to do. And those those players are important. Like, not everyone can be a versatile, like, James Harden, be able to score any level, and, and he, you know, <laughs> be an MVP level candidate. That's not every player. Duncan Robinson, he has one job when he steps on the floor, and he can do it damn well, and that is shoot the basketball. If you're Pat Riley, are you paying Duncan Robinson ninety million dollars? I mean, he. I mean, he was a big part of the finals, right? Were the finals last year or two years ago? <laughs> two years ago. Boom! <laughs> Point proven. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Listen. I don't hate Duncan Robinson. What did these shooters do to you, man? Okay, I, <laughs> what did these? Snipers? I like Kyle Korver. I like JJ Redick. Wait, then what's okay. the difference between them and Duncan Robinson? Good. They were JJ brought, Redick gets big contracts. They were brought up in eras. Okay. Oh. They they were brought up. Oh, in, uh, man. it's the era. Just, they were brought up in eras where you could take an elbow and get up. Okay. Oh my god. You, get up, brush it off, run to the other end of the court, get your ass over there, and try to defend. Try, because I'm not saying they can. <laughs> try Duncan to Robinson tries to defend. Yeah. He's not good at it. Who sa- oh, my God. I have never <laughs> seen Duncan Robinson try. I promise okay. you he tries to defend. Mm-hmm. Do you okay. know, wait, hold on. I, I have to, all right. I have to ask you. You think the difference between Duncan Robinson and people like J.J. Redick and Kyle Korver is the era that they played in? Yeah. Conti, you're lying. <laughs> yeah, you're I'm lying serious. To I'm me. serious. Oh man, I'm serious. I listen, love Duncan Robinson. Listen, I'm sorry. Okay, all right, all right, all right. He's not my favorite player. Guys like <laughs> guys like JJ Redick and Kyle Korver, they had to face phenoms, man. I'm serious. Like there is nobody with like the mentality. There's nobody with the work ethic like Kobe Bryant. May he rest in peace. Okay, in today's NBA, okay, nobody. Okay, like there are people who are close and people who work hard, but no. Like, nobody has that type of Mamba mentality like Kobe Bryant did. And Korver and Redick had to defend guys like that, okay? They had to defend, like, prime LeBron James, 
Okay, like Cavs 07 and like Miami Heat. They, ha- all right. around, they all right. had to try and defend guys try. like that. They did yeah. not succeed. I'm not saying I'm not saying they did. <laughs> but okay. So that Duncan Robinson They're knows tough. what he's worth. He They're knows tough. I can shoot the ball. I can't really play defense. He's still. I mean, he's got a good frame. I mean, he's a tall guy. That's important in basketball. <laughs> no, no Muggsy Bogues played. <laughs> he had all right. He had one. He has one job on the floor, right? Shoot the basketball. I, I think he does it well. This is gonna become DK Mecca part two. <laughs> get Robinson. Connor. Get Ryan. Get everyone. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> we're running it back. All right. So I, the Phoenix Suns this year made the finals. Unfortunately, lost to the Bucks. Uh, they re-signed Chris Paul. They re-signed Cameron Payne. They get Javale McGee. And, I mean, yeah, Abdul Nader, that's not anything crazy. But I need to know, Gino, because you thought Chris Paul was an MVP guy. I mean, you guys heard it in the intro that we played. Mm-hmm. CP MV3, Gino was was all over it. But do you think the Phoenix Suns have a chance to make it back to the NBA Finals? They have a chance, but I don't think it's going to happen. Don't think so? No. I think... Whew, this is tough. This is really <laughs> tough. It's going to hit deep. This, this is the last year you're going to see of Chris Paul like he performed oh, last year. He just signed a four-year extension. I understand. He's, he's making a I, lot of I, money I, I, again. I, I, <laughs> again. I, I, I understand. I really do. I, I think this is the last year you're going to see Chris Paul play to like the level of eliteness that we saw last year. So is, I, and is, then will I Chris think, Paul never get a ring? And then I think it's going to be... Hold on. No. <laughs> and, then I, and then I think it's going to be a steady decline. Okay? Like... It's not going to be, like, something like, oh, my God, he's so bad. Like, he sucks. He's a shell of himself. I don't think that he's going to be somebody who really can carry anymore, yeah. who really is able to, like, run that offense, be that floor general. I think maybe he'll tr- become a better pl- version of Rajon Rondo as he ages. Does that make sense? Yes. Someone who still does try in the regular season, okay? Like, because, like, Rondo and Chris Paul have different mentalities. I, I do think that... It's going to be something where after this season, this upcoming season, all you're really going to see is Chris Paul, unfortunately, beginning a slight but steady decline. So is, is this it for Chris Paul? He never gets a ring and he doesn't ride off into the sunset well, with, with a ring? The referees rig. Oh, come on. Come on. Giannis played out of his mind. Come no, on now. No. Don't do that. No. The referees rigged it, okay, because the league, it, the league doesn't allow good guys to win. Okay. Oh my the league God. doesn't allow Gino, good guys Gino to win. Conti, you're lying. <laughs> How many times I gotta say it? Good guys who know how to play the game the right way are no longer allowed to succeed in this oh. league, and it's a oh damn shame. God. It's a damn shame because all they care, all they care about it. is the ratings. They care about the flashy oh. dunks, the flashy alley Everyone alley-oop. wanted Chris Paul to win. Okay. Everyone wanted no. him to win, ri- except no. what? Except the refs? Yeah, yeah except the refs. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was. That I'm, be, was I'm it, being dramatic. I'm being an ass. Okay, I love Chris Paul. He lost fair and square. Okay. Unfortunately. Well, uh, as we, we wind down our final two-ish minutes. Actually wind down. <laughs> <laughs> actually. Actually wind down from all the Chris Paul, Duncan Robinson, all that stuff. I mean, this was a, a great first episode, man. This was I fun. definitely think so, this, yeah. This was great. You know, <laughs> minor setback in the beginning, but, you know, next yeah. episode we're going to be on the mic for the uh, the entire time. Hopefully no 18-wheeler falls on side next week. Not. Uh, thank you to everyone who, who tuned in and listened to us. This was such a fun episode to do. It's so fun to to live. I've seen my phone blowing up this entire time. Yep. Group chats and, and everyone talking. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to keep doing this. We don't know if Wednesday at 6 is going to be the exact time that we do it. But we are going to do once a week. Everything's going to be on the bench now. Uh, the episodes are still going to be on Spotify, so and YouTube, right? And and YouTube, yeah. So if you missed this episode live, it's and you're listening to it on Spotify, just know they're going to keep being live, and they're going to keep being on Spotify and YouTube, so you can keep listening to them there. Uh, yeah, o- overall, so fun. Uh, shout out to Gianna Conti for winning the T-shirt giveaway. Yeah, I, guys, I really want to say right off the bat, <laughs> it wasn't rigged. Okay, I swear he to you. He spun the wheel. I swear we to God, I, I, I spun the wheel. <laughs> there is no magnet in the computer <laughs> that makes it go to Gianna's name, okay? Uh, real quick, uh, per request of some human beings, shout out John and the Dirty Boys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to win trivia this this week. We're going we're, we're gonna to be back to top ten in the country. Okay, <laughs> shout out Chelsea. She's a great waitress. Okay. <laughs> is that her name? Yeah, that's because her name. learned her name? Yeah. Shout out Chelsea, man. <laughs> yeah, shout out Chelsea. She is a fantastic waitress, brings the energy every single week. 
Uh, yeah, and, and once again, shout out Terrence Adderley. Uh, hit him up for uh, Terrence Adderley Photography. He's a great guy, my coworker. Uh, if you ever, like I said, any need, any need to work, just hit him up. And I, I really did, uh, even though the setback happened, I really did enjoy this episode. I had a lot of fun freaking out about the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you all for watching. Follow us on Instagram at Conti and Nick. All socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, the way we send it off, Jumbo! Jumbo!